Hello, and welcome to Elevator Pitch Series for the Radiographer. I am Michael, and this is the second video in the series on radiographic technique. Over the next set of videos we'll be looking at contrast media. In this video, we'll be finding out what contrast media is and the types of contrast media. In the video on radiographic contrast, in our radiographic imaging series, we learned the differences in tissue thickness and other characteristics of tissues determine how much radiographic contrast is produced. This means that when there is a high difference in the structure of tissues, like how bones and fat are different, great contrast is recorded on the image, a great difference in densities on the image. Now, what happens when there is a low difference between different anatomical structures and you need an image? Contrast media is employed. Contrast media are artificial media that are used in delineating or outlining tissues that naturally have a low subject contrast. This implies body parts with structures that are similar in appearance. Contrast media increases the subject contrast in these body parts. Examples of parts that we commonly use contrast media for include the digestive system, the urinary system, the reproductive system and the biliary system. There are many ways you can classify contrast media, you will learn about these different ways in this video. Let us start out by grouping them based on their atomic weight. Under this classification, we have the positive and negative contrast media. The positive contrast media has its name because it possesses a higher atomic weight than the tissue it is introduced into. This means that it will absorb more photons than the tissue that surrounds it and would produce a lower radiographic density than this tissue that surrounds it. Examples of positive contrast media include barium sulfate and organic iodine. As for the negative contrast media, its atomic weight is lower than that of the tissue that it is introduced into. This means that it would absorb less photons and would produce greater radiographic density than the tissue surrounding it. Examples include gases like air, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. Take note that imaging modalities like computed tomography and magnetic resonance imaging have greatly reduced the need for solubility as a measure of how much one substance dissolves in another. The positive contrast media, barium sulfate and organic iodine, are further classified based on their solubility in water. The first group under this is the water-insoluble contrast media, barium sulfate. Barium sulfate is usually produced in a powder or semi-solid colloidal suspension, like a syrup. It is not soluble in water. The human body is made up of a lot of water. This means that when barium sulfate, which is not soluble in water, is introduced into the body, it is not readily absorbed and excreted by the body. This means that it will stay in the body for a long period of time. You will find water-insoluble contrast media like barium sulfate used majorly in investigations of the gastrointestinal tract. Examples of these investigations include barium swallow investigations of the esophagus, barium meal investigations of the stomach, small bowel enema investigations, and barium enema investigations of the large intestine. Depending on the examination, the barium sulfate is either taken orally or through the rectum as an enema. Now, because it is water insoluble, it will stay within the body system long enough for the examination to be completed before it is egested as part of the feces. We should also point out that there are precautions with the use of barium sulfate. As we have stated, barium sulfate is water insoluble and is therefore not readily absorbed and excreted by the body. For this reason, it is not used when investigating patients who are suspected to be suffering from perforation or obstruction. If barium sulfate is used in cases of perforation, it could leak through the perforation and get to the peritoneal cavity. This would cause an irritation of the peritoneal cavity, known as barium peritonitis and barium peritonitis can lead to death. In cases of obstruction, the blockage makes the barium sulfate unable to leave the body system through ingestion as feces. This causes further abdominal distension. In both cases of perforation and obstruction, water-soluble contrast media is used instead. Next is the water-soluble contrast media. The organic iodines fall under this group. This type of contrast media usually exists in a liquid form. It is soluble in water. What this means is that, when it is introduced into the body, it is rapidly absorbed into the body's water and excreted by the kidneys. Thus, it does not stay within the region of interest for long. This is why speed is important in investigations where this type of contrast media is used. This type of contrast media is used in investigations of the urinary system, the biliary system, the central nervous system, the cardiovascular system, and in some gastrointestinal system exams, like we stated, when there is a suspected case of perforation or obstruction. 
Organic iodines are further classified into highest molar contrast media and lowest molar contrast media. To better understand these two, we need to talk about a phenomenon known as osmolality. Osmolality is simply the concentration of dissolved particles in a solution. How many dissolved particles are in a solution? A solution with a high osmolality will induce a great osmotic pressure. This osmotic pressure causes more fluid to flow into the solution. What this means is that, when contrast media that has an osmolality greater than that of the body fluids is introduced into the body, the contrast media will induce an osmotic pressure that would cause water to flow into it. And this water that flows into the contrast media, where is it coming from? It comes from the body fluid, which is a lower osmolality. This movement of water from the body fluid will cause the patient to be dehydrated, and this increases the likelihood of being physiologically intolerant to the contrast media, which sets the stage for many contrast media reactions. This implies that, the greater the osmolality of contrast media used, the greater the chances of contrast media reactions occurring. To emphasize further, if contrast media that has an osmolality near the osmolality of the body fluid is used, there is a low chance of contrast media reactions occurring. Compared to when contrast media with osmolality far greater than the body fluid is used, which is a higher chance of leading to contrast media reactions. That takes us to highest molar contrast media. These were the first type of organic iodine contrast media to be produced. They are currently the less expensive type on the market. As their name implies, they have a high osmolality. When highest molar contrast media is introduced into a solution, it breaks down into an anion and a cation. The anion is usually iodine, while the cation is either sodium or megalomon. This breaking down or dissociation into ions gives it the name, ionic contrast media. This dissociation into two causes more particles to be present in this type of contrast. This high concentration of particles means that the solution has a high osmolality. This explains the name, highest molar contrast media. As a matter of fact, Highest molar contrast media have an osmolality that is 5 to 8 times greater than the body fluid, plasma. As we have explained before, this type of contrast media has a higher chance of causing a contrast media reaction. This is why it has been replaced by lowest molar contrast media in many radiographic examinations. Examples of highest molar contrast media include diatrazote sodium or diatrazote megalomon, commonly marketed as urographin, and iethylmate sodium or iethylmate megalomon, commonly marketed as conray. Next is the lowest molar contrast media. These are an advancement over the highest molar contrast media and are currently more expensive than the highest molar contrast media. In order to produce contrast media with low osmolality, you need to reduce the concentration of dissolved particles in the contrast media. This can be achieved by two methods. First is in the production of ionic lowest molar contrast media. In these types, the contrast media still dissociates in a solution, like highest molar contrast media. However, it is made to dissociate into less particles than the highest molar breed. Second is in the production of non-ionic lowest molar contrast media. In this type, the contrast media will not dissociate into more particle. This inevitably means that less particles are present in the contrast media. With a low concentration of dissolved particles in both methods, the chances of contrast media reactions occurring are reduced. Examples of low contrast media include Eoxylgate, commonly marketed as hexabrix, and iapamidyl, commonly marketed as iapamiron. In this video, we have looked at various methods of classifying contrast media. Let us conclude this video by going over these methods once again, so you can get the big picture. We started out by classifying contrast media based on its atomic weight. And under this criteria, we have the negative contrast media, which is a lower atomic weight than its surrounding tissue, and the positive contrast media, which is a higher atomic weight than the tissue surrounding it. We then went further into classifying the positive contrast media, based on their solubility in water. Giving rise to the water-insoluble barium sulfate, and the water-soluble organic iodine. Then, we classified the water-soluble organic iodine contrast media, based on its osmolality. Under this, we had the highest molar contrast media, and the lowest molar. Lastly, we classified lowest molar contrast media, based on the method of achieving this low osmolality. Under this, the ionic lowest molar contrast media, which dissociates into particles, and the non-ionic lowest molar contrast media, which does not dissociate into particles. That concludes the first part on contrast media. We continue in the next video. Did you love this video? Would you want more content? 
Please subscribe and share with your colleagues. Until next time, do enjoy the learning process and take care.